Here's the story of my life and my legacy. You know, most people really struggle with what they want to do with their life. I mean, it's a common thing with everyone. Not me, not me, not me, not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. From an early age, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I was actually two years old, and I've told this story before when I saw I... my first snake. It was a ball python, not a pie ball, but just a normal wild type ball python. And from that moment on, I knew that I was gonna work with reptiles. I mean, I obviously didn't know when I was two, but all I did know is that I was obsessed with reptiles. And throughout my entire childhood, all I really cared about was working with animals. I actually used to catch garter snakes when I was a kid. I spent the entire summer, every summer, out in the woods, catching as many garter snakes as I could could bring them home and keeping them in the garage. And then I used to actually harvest tadpoles. That's right. And I would metamorphose them right in the garage. And I would literally metamorphose probably, I would literally metamorphose probably a thousand little toads each year. Oh my God. Speaking of tadpoles, Jessica, what is going on over here? I don't know. They won't stop. They won't stop. <laughs> I mean, I knew we had a lot of tadpoles, but look at this. We've got these tadpoles. We've got these tadpoles. We've got these tadpoles. We've got giant tadpoles here. We've got bigger tadpoles here. And we've got tadpoles that are about to metamorphose into frogs here. My goodness. We have an explosion of milk frogs. This is absolutely crazy. So if you want to milk frog guys bhbreptiles.com we are overloaded with tadpoles there's soon to be milk frogs and the interesting thing is that as i was doing this as a kid never realizing all these years later we would be doing it all over again with milk frogs you know, my mom and my whole family were never animal lovers as a matter of fact we literally never even had a household pet through my entire childhood i was so obsessed with animals and in particular reptiles i remember reading about green anaconda and never thinking that all these years later i would have an opportunity to work with such majestic amazing animals. And by the time I was in my early teens, I actually lived in the basement of my mom's house. We had a little place down there, had plenty of room for reptiles, and it was away from the rest of the family. And I begged my mom literally on the daily, please can I have a snake? She knew that all these years I was obsessed with them, even since I was a little, little tiny kid, yet she still would not budge. She was like, no reptiles in my house. There is no way that she was going to allow me to do it. But you know, that didn't stop me. I was still obsessed with reptiles, and I actually started working at a reptile pet shop. It was a fish pet shop but it had a reptile section i used to walk by there on my way home from school every single day and i would literally every day of the week even on the weekends i would go back there on the weekends and spend like an hour a day just looking at their reptiles looking at their fish being absolutely obsessed with it after a while they finally needed some help in particular with the reptile section they said hey do you want a job i was like oh my gosh i would love to work and i literally work every day after school and then all weekend long i'd work because i love being there so much the ironic thing is is that the first day i ever worked at this pet shop called the pet vendor I actually had my first snake bite and it happened to be a ball python I was admiring it just like this saying oh look at how cute and bam it bit me right in the, in the mouth that's right my first snake bite was a face bite right to the mouth on my first day of work and what that taught me was that I had a lot to learn about reptile behavior I've been working at the pet shop for about six months or so and my 15th birthday was coming up and believe it or not my mom finally broke down and said you know what obviously you're working super hard I'm going to school full time I'm working the other hours at the pet shop literally like day to night I was just going school work school work and she finally said you know what you're pretty committed to this and she wanted to reward said, me you know what for your 15th birthday I'll allow you to buy a snake and we had just gotten in a shipment of baby normal wild type Burmese pythons just like my guy snazzy right here and basically I thought I want a snake I didn't think much of it I was like I'll take any snake that we have and again the coolest snakes that we had at the time were the Burmese pythons now I didn't know a lot about Burmese pythons at the time and my pet shop owner was like yeah, they get about eight or ten so I ended up buying my first ever python. Of course, his name was Monty, and I ended up keeping it for many, many years afterwards. It wasn't until about a year after I got it that I started to see some books come into the pet shop that showed adult Burmese pythons that were 18 foot, 200 pounds. I thought, oh my gosh, what had I gotten myself into? At the time, Monty had probably gotten to four foot or something like that. I had no idea that it was one day going to be 17, 18 foot long. Live and learn. Definitely not the best first snake, but I was so happy to finally get my first pet snake. Shortly thereafter I built a reptile room in my mom's basement I started buying up snakes because I loved it my second snake was actually a boa constrictor just like cupcake here but it was a boy and his name was King and I loved that snake he was such a good snake I had him for many many years and the next up was of course my ball python and his name was Axel and speaking of ball pythons we have an amazing clutch right here Boy, I hope this is gonna be fertile this is actually an enchi pistabi that's het for clown so it's an enchi a 
It's a pastel. It's a Mojave. And it's a hat for clown. And she is on a beautiful clutch of eggs and she was bred to a beautiful male. Don't you bite me. Don't you bite me. It's okay, girl. I'm going to show you the dad here in a second. But you know, at that point, the floodgates kind of opened once I had that room going. I had so much space, I was just buying up snakes. My mom wasn't going in that room, so she had no idea how many snakes I actually had. So I was just buying things left and right. And then I met this couple, Mark and Kim Bell, actually. I wanted to show you first what the male is. A black pastel clown ball pipe. Absolute ripper of an animal. So bred to that Enchi Pastavi head clown. Whoo, doggy. We've got some good potential, right? Well, Mark and Kim were actually supplying our pet shop with some snakes and stuff. And I kind of befriended them. Really, they became my mentors, to be honest with you. And they had a couple hundred snakes in their basement. And so I used to go over there as much as I possibly could. Over the next few years, I literally saw them grow from just a couple hundred snakes to maybe a couple thousand snakes. They were breeding and selling it, and they were actually making pretty good money. So I was spending as much time with Mark and Kim as I possibly can. Ironically enough, they have a company right now down in North Naples, Florida, that is still the largest reptile breeding company in the entire world. And they were my mentors growing right up here in Michigan before they moved down south. So by the time they moved, they were absolutely amazingly big, which is cool. Let's see how many eggs there are here, because this is a giant clutch. This is two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven eggs. I mean, eleven eggs from an absolute banger of a clutch right there. We're going to get some great babies in 57 days, but you know, that mentorship that I had with the Bell really meant everything because they taught me so much about breeding snakes and doing things. And I thought to myself for the first time, like, oh my gosh, this is my path to actually working with reptiles full time. And that's breeding snakes just like Mark and Kim did. And during that period, I learned so much from Mark and Kim and all the other things I could absorb. And I started to have some pretty good success, obviously breeding snakes. And selling snakes. So in 1989, we founded BHB Reptiles. And then right around that same time, I actually met Lori. And Lori coming on was huge, right? Because now I had a second person that believed in that me, that wanted to create this business, that wanted to do well with me. And it was just really amazing. And that really took us to the next level. And that's when we made our first major investment. And that's, of course, when I bought my first albino Burmese python. These were like investment quality animals. And it was really the first kind of investment animal in the reptile trade. They were $1,600 a piece, $3,200 for the pair. I bought them actually off of Mark and Kim Bell because they had been producing them already. And that was like changed the entire trajectory of BHB reptiles because 18 months later, we produced albino Burmese as well as some heterozygous. We made almost $40,000 that year out of my mom's basement, which gave us the ability to actually buy our very first house, you know, put a good down payment on. And then I was no longer trapped in my mom's basement. I just can't believe how ginormous Ivy is right now. She is crazy. And during that time, we actually filled up the basement of our house and it was time to rent our first building. We rented our first building. Then we rented our second building. Then we rented our third building before buying our big building, the fourth building that we ever had. We bought it. It was a giant place. We built that place. We grew from a few thousand snakes to tens of thousands of snakes. And we ran that for about eight to 10 years. And then I kind of noticed that I really wasn't that happy. You guys know I love to create a bond with every animal I have. I want to know them. I want to interact with them. I want to love them. And when you have tens of thousands of snakes, all of a sudden you lose track of like each animal. I mean, there was times where I would see an animal I didn't even know that I had. I was like, where did that come from? I was like, oh gosh, we've had that for a year and I didn't even know. And it just kind of didn't feel right to me. So we ended up downsizing that by about 70%. We got rid of that building and we moved into this building. But of course, this building was just one section. And when we had the big building, we actually started Snake Bites TV in 2008. And that was our first way into YouTube and social media. I just wanted to share with everyone how much I love these animals. And we did Snake Bites for almost 10 years. But then when we finally moved into this building here, basically it was just this here and then the dungeon. That's it. There was nothing more. But the plan was always get the entire building and open up a reptile zoo. The reptarium. Now, I had no idea if the reptarium would actually work, but I knew that that was a passion of mine and I wanted to try it and I was going to do it. In the meantime, I stopped doing Snake Bites TV after almost 10 years and I started the vlog channel. And the vlog channel really blew up and it actually was the first time in my career that social media was actually making some pretty decent money. Which really helped facilitate this building right here, which is the Reptarium 1.0. Reptarium 1.0 was certainly just our way of saying, could this actually work? What could we do? And it was kind of learning something that we had never done. We had never been open to the public. We'd never had a zoo. We'd never had these interactions before. So it was actually really cool. And it worked out so well that of course we decided to open up Reptarium 2.0. And after a short little respite with the thing called the pandemic of 2020, we were shut down. We opened back up and the zoo just did really well. I mean, so well, all I ever hoped for. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I was finally living the dream that I wanted to have. So much so that we decided, hey, you know what? This is going great. What's the next dream? The next dream is to open up an aquarium and a reptile zoo together. Thankfully, the building came available across the street. And we immediately tried to secure it so that we could go forward with this next dream, of course, which is the Legacy Aquarium. Loving fish and reptiles as much as I did, I couldn't think of a better way 
to kind of achieve that goal than to have a place where he had all these aquariums and he had reptiles. Speaking of uh, this building, looks like he's got some work going on over here that I didn't know was going to happen today. And it looks like this wall is starting to come down. Again, you got to remember where the white pillars are here. That's going to be the front of the building. And of course, this wall here in back is part of the aquarium. So of course, that whole wall has to come down here where all this wood is. comes out. That's just a temporary wall. So when you're looking in here, you'll see all the way into the building. Let's go take a look at this. This is taking out the wall right now how cool is that and just that's just gonna stay there or is that uh yeah did you guys decide on that if you couldn't steal it anywhere? oh i don't know and of course we all know what happened next we got some pretty devastating news about my health and uh we kind of put the whole project on hold for eight weeks i could say that was probably the toughest eight weeks of my life not only trying to figure out my health situation but also knowing that my dream the legacy aquarium you know the thing that i'd worked for my whole life might not come to fruition and it was really really bothering me tremendously thankfully lori came to me one day and said you know what brian i've decided let's just move forward we'll figure it out don't know what we're gonna do, but let's just move forward, we'll figure out as it goes. Take a look at this guy's legacy aquarium coming soon. It's a banner we're gonna hang up. We're gonna have a couple other signs with like a 3D rendering of the actual building out front too. It's so exciting. So I'm so happy the legacy aquarium is back on track. My dream, my legacy, my vision is back on track. Exactly how we're gonna get done with it, we're not 100% sure. You guys have helped already by raising up $227,000 on the GoFundMe. Not gonna lie to you, I appreciate every dollar that you guys have given. We definitely need to raise more. More. We need to raise a considerable amount more. So if you have any opportunity to do that, I'll put a link in the description to the GoFundMe. Every dollar helps, and I can't thank you enough for doing it. Because like I said, we started the project knowing that we're not going to have enough money to finish the project. But we just know that we have some time to figure it out. And that's what we're planning on doing, is just figuring it out. I'm so happy that this project is back on track. And listen, guys, I can see this thing done. Remember, this is the entrance here and the exit over here. Huge pond. My friends from Aquascape, Greg and Ed, are coming out to build big it. Big waterfall here, big stream here bridge that actually walks across the entrance and the exit's going to be amazing listen guys i plan on being here for the opening i plan on celebrating it with you guys but frankly i plan on beating what i've got going on right now and being here for years and years and years to come and celebrating the thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that are going to be here it's going to be a crazy ride you know a lot of ups and downs are going to happen over the next seven months and that's our plan is to be open by christmas time so we're hoping that seven months from now we'll be actually open here a lot to do a lot of pieces to go but i'm going to take you guys on the entire journey and at the end we're going to definitely be victorious hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos you can also hit that subscription button it would mean a lot to me also hit that like button while you're down there have a wonderful day reptile army remember a lot to think about <laughs> yeah